Jai Hind and welcome to Dev Talks. This is Adi Achint. As you can see, I have with me Major General Rajiv Narayanan, who's going to tell us a little bit a peek into history, as well as the current to understand the current geopolitics of oil, gas, energy. <coughs> There's a lot that we don't know how this market has been set up, how it influences each one of our lives today. We need to understand the history to kind of realize what this game is all about and how it needs to be played by India going forward. Sir, good evening and welcome. Thank you, Adi. Always a pleasure. Very interesting topic. Very close to my heart. Been following this ever since the fall of the Soviet Union. Uh, before we get into the topic per se, uh, remember the Soviet Union per se held one of the largest uh, reservoirs of oil and gas. Yes, sir. Till the Soviet Union was there, the Americans could do nothing. And so they tried to control the Middle East and Latin America, especially Venezuelan oil. That they tried to control. Okay. And they have usurped all the rights on the Caribbean Sea. They don't give up anything to them. And they had been doing a lot of drilling there also. But anyway, Texas and other places they have. But the main oil resources lay here. Now, why are they interested so much? When the Soviet Union fell, my thought went why they were so keen to control since 92. They have been at it, it's 30 years now, how to control, gain control of the oil and gas reserves in the heartland. That has been the single most driving force behind that rationale. By the end of the Second World War, U US controlled almost... 75% of the gold reserves of the world. That was Fort Knox. Because both during, and especially in, in First World War, they gained a lot because they were giving uh, all equipment and support to both sides, which was required. At the end of Second World War, 48 was when the Bretton Woods institutions were formed by the Americans. IMF and World Bank came in. And People only remember that agreement was signed by all the leading nations of that time that international trade would be done only in dollars. That is the start of your global trade in dollars. Dollar, the dollar. Others, yeah, others, their economy was shattered. Basically, it was the European nations and the Japanese and others didn't have anything to say much. The Americans got into a whole lot of small wars everywhere because oil was found in the Middle East, overthrowing governments, having fights with the Soviet Union in these areas, Latin America, Indochina, Korean War had also taken place. So they were printing dollars by the dozen. And suddenly in the late 60s, Nixon realized that they have overshot the dollar than the equal value of gold that they hold. Till then, for the people who are listening and don't know, till then, all currency is, it's a paper currency. It's not exactly a currency. It's an IOU slip of the government. And if you read carefully, it says, I will give you equal amount of dollar, of gold. Gold. The equivalent value of gold will be given. So now in 71, I think it was, I think, six, between 68 and 71, I think it was in 71, Nixon suddenly announces that temporarily they will disconnect the dollar with the gold, primarily to stabilize the international trade. Yeah, it became stable because there was one dollar, it was powerful and it became easy. Otherwise, every time a currency went up and went down, you would have a problem how to manage. That is what they say. But uh, what we are seeing today, which I will come cover later, that it's not a major issue. Now became the issue that they had to control all the oil and gas 
because when the OPEC was being formed, that was the deal with the House of Saud that they will ensure the continuance, but their boards will sell oil only and only in dollars, petrodollars. And that is why today, because the other currencies have all come in IMF, you have the other currencies, special drawing rights, though majority is in dollars, primarily because of oil trade is only in dollars. Yes, the global trade is also there, but the largest chunk in that, more than 60% of global trade is in dollars today, but major chunk of that is only because of oil and gas. So keep that. Basically. That is why we talk of the, that is why I was happy with the topic, is geopolitics of oil and gas. Okay. so We never I thought of it, a, actually. And today, <laughs> today, because of what the events are happening around the world, we've kind of started thinking about it, sir. Okay. Now, yeah. So, let us look at <laughs> the geopolitics of oil. Okay. Now, though this is not the main strategy for dominating the heartland of the world island, but one of the strategies under the umbrella of geoeconomics, because countries need energy to develop. And so that energy is going to be bought in dollars. And so the geoeconomic comes in. Now, because of that, it also enables uh, US to have a geopolitical and geostrategic influence in the oil producing regions of the region. world. Mm. That is how he is going to dominate this area. And like I said, ever since the fall of the Soviet Union, there has been a singular thrust to control. Because all oil and gas, whether it be Caucasus, whether it be from Central Asia, the pipelines went towards across the Urals into European Russia. What was the aim of the US and of course its allies who support it? Either you control the energy corridors or you disrupt it. So if you disrupt it, I can't use it. You can't use it either. What you see in Ukraine, I'll, you will see how the pipelines, when they moved, how the disruption has taken place and why EU has uh, bitten its nose to spite the face. So your next aim is to push the developing countries into the costly clean energy. They know the developing countries don't have that much of money. And so they will have a, a certain amount of economic dominance over them. Their consumption of fossil fuels will reduce because you're going to push them towards that. The geoeconomic squeeze, you will do them, give it to them. They themselves aim to use a balance between the fossil fuel and clean energy. They are not doing away with fossil fuel. Sorry. Certain degree of clean energy they will bring in, but slowly. They are nowhere near the targets that had been set till date. Nobody has changed. People blame uh, ki Americans have not changed, Chinese have not changed. Forget the Americans and Chinese, even Europe has not changed. Just by showing me somebody is cycling and somebody has an electric scooter doesn't mean anything. I'm sorry. Your planes still run on fossil fuel. Your ships still, still run on fossil fuel. Your weapons and equipment still run on fossil fuel. You've not changed anything as yet. Okay. Now, remember Mikhail Khodorkovsky or people have forgotten. <laughs> During our era, he was a big case. Yeah. You see, uh, when Yeltsin came in, he was high on vodka. He used to be drunk by 11 o'clock in the morning. Awesome. Guys. So they were about 12 to 15, you can say, ex-influential people or children of the influential people who bought off their jewels, whatever family jewels were there. Mikhail Khodorkovsky was one of them. When Putin came to power, 99, his deal with Yeltsin's daughter 
and with the oligarchs was only two things you will not interfere in politics and number two you will not sell our jewels that is oil and gas to the west you will not sell this company to the west mikhail khodorkovsky became too big for his boots he did both he entered into politics started a foundation called open russia started okay. interfering he was about to sign a deal selling 40% of the stakes in ucos by then ucos had joined with another uh, gas uh, and pipeline agency stiffnets and it was one of the biggest companies at that Big, time yes. 40% stake to exxon mobil that's it his chapter was closed and the message was sent loud and clear to all of them everybody became quiet okay so the one of the first ones which they had wanted they started work on was uh, one was the uh, baku i'll come to that later btc baku tbilisi mm. kehan but prior to that they started work on what was called tapi along with btc btc i'll come to later central asia ka lete hain iran pakistan india pipeline which is from the southern pars field as you can see in the map south of iran gas fields to bring it there there was one going via turkey as you can see that uh, orange line going into turkey it was called nabuko it was going from iran and going into turkey and then going into europe and uh, you had also the energy things which were linking central asia into south asia kasa 1000 hmm. this was all to take this region away from russia so like i had mentioned taliban last i had mentioned exxon was very keen to for this tapi to get into tapi and to develop the dolatabal Uh, gas fields of afghanistan but the taliban they had looked askance and they did nothing when america uh, uh, the pakistanis moved in and supported the taliban in fact one of the corps and others were all had gone in and triple one uh, brigade the coup brigade was permanently located in uh, mazar e sharif mazar by mm-hmm. the way uh, for supporting uh, fighting the northern alliance and but Taliban did the biggest thing of signing the agreement with this company of Argentina Bridas and 98 onwards Taliban has become a bad guy uske pehle Taliban was a very good guy then he became Taliban became bad now this is the Baku Tbilisi Kehan pipeline so that from the caucasus they can take this oil away and subsequently they were looking at linking the central asian oil and gas pipelines across the caspian coming into baku and then joining this talks began in 92 agreement in 1998 it has commenced in 2002 it is going no nothing much it's not so great hmm. okay so this is what has been going on the russians got worried and they knew that poland was not uh, behaving even then though subsequently to ukraine also went down i'll show you in the map later how the crux became so to sort out poland nord stream work the talk started in 97 yes 2005 it started and 2011 the nord stream 1 was completed and oil and gas started going because by then this chap our man uh, gerhard schroder he still is the head of the uh, nord stream consortium this is the nord stream 2 the dotted line which i am showing commenced in 2001 should have been ready by september but in that commando attack a lot of people say the polish the british and the americans were involved 
that's what is the chatter on the net uh, the two pipelines of the nord 1 and one of the nord 2 which has been hit russia is already in talks with the germans that's why you suddenly find scholz has become very quiet and especially after uh, angela merkel has come clean on minks agreement they have said that if you want firstly they have said no cap secondly they have said if you want Nord Stream One will take a little more time to repair, but Nord Stream Two will be ready to deliver oil and gas, all that is needed by Germany and the other countries who want to link with it, February 2022 onwards. 23 onwards. Oh, sorry, 23 onwards. So now mm -hmm. it will be interesting to see what happens. Since the Nord Stream, there was a lot of hue and cry from the Americans. The Russians also tried to go. Via South Stream. This is their famous yeah. South Stream. Never got going because, uh, firstly, Serbia may attack. Ho gaya. Okay. Which is again today. Yeah, I'll tell you, Serbia may attack. Hua, sab ho gaya, sab normal. Ho gaya. Jab ye banne laga, what happened? 2007, they started work on it. 2008 was when Kosovo suddenly declares itself independence. Declares its independence. Okay. <laughs> and now again, so that they worry is that is South Stream ko activate kar dega dubara to North Stream ke bajaye yahan se aajayega. So now again the problems have started in Serbia. Serbia. So this map explains to you the pipeline and look at the Ukraine. So now you realize why you will always have a problem in Ukraine. <laughs> Poland to ek hi tha, but Ukraine dekh lo. Theek hai? So I'm just showing you where all, what all takes place and you can link it to the oil and gas. And now we come to the most famous of all, Iraq. Whatever they may say, WND. What has come off the record, Chatham House talks with various experts is Iraq, Iran and Russia were getting into a deal to create a bourse to sell, actually to sell in euros oil. And so our man had to go. Libya was also one of the signatories to join mm -hmm. on to that. And so Muammar Gaddafi had to go and Saddam had to go. Okay. The very old pipeline is going from Kirkuk to Banas, Banyas in Syria. But Turkey was then a good boy. So they were looking at a link from Turkey to Kehan. As you can see where there's Turkey written just below that, Kehan is written. That is the terminal end for the Baku-Tbilisi-Kehan pipeline. Hmm. They wanted to do that. Okay. There was another pipeline the Iraqis were working on, which was supposed to be the old Kirkuk to Haifa. Okay. Saudi Arabia jumped into it at that time and they were looking very keen to deny Iran the control and influence on Lebanon. The old Trans-Arabian pipeline, TAP pipeline, and there used to be a road, TAP road, the road used to go along with that. That used to take gas into Sidon, Lebanon. Min mein mark kar rakha hai. Now, do you realize why the problem took place in Syria? And why Turkey is also anti Syria? Because initially uh, they were supposed to take it to Kehan. Kehan. Ab wo nahi hua. It's supposed to be called the Turk Stream. Yeah, ab wo nahi hua. So now you realize why this they start were going to start work in they had started work on this renew uh, renewing this pipeline from kirkuk to banias in 2010 2011 the war in syria started and before this the saudis were looking at sidon but since that would have denied this pipeline going to haifa because they were uh, Saudis were also trying to talk to Iraq Iraqis that and Kurds that why don't you take it instead of Banias take it through Sidon 
So you re- see the problem in Lebanon? It will never die off. So you, like I said, the aim is if I can't use it, disrupt it. Okay, these are one of the sidelines which add to the geoeconomics of whatever strife is going on. And then under cover of this, you do a regime change of person who will agree to what you say. And that has been the bane, that has been the bane of Ukraine. Mm. And always remember the oligarch before the comedian who has come now, the, uh, the previous regime had oligarchs, oil oligarchs. Yulia Timoshenko is an oil oligarch, yeah. which gives you an indication West supported that kis cheej pe interest hai unko. Okay. Ukraine is expendable, sir. Oil and gas. So what is this disruptive strategy? The uh, Bush Jr. called it the global war on terror. Hmm. Obama changed it to countering violent extremism. I'm still wanting to see Trump name, didn't name it anything. Biden ne bhi abhi koi naam nahi diya hai. The actual aim was that if TAPI, I, IP, not IRI, it's IPI, CASA have to do, it has to be done with American support. If it's not going to be done by American support, block it. So that's uh-huh. effectively blocked. Though the uh, Russians are very keen to activate this line. So last uh, discussions which we had in a, about a week ago, they were very keen. And so we had indicated to them why involve Pakistan at all. It's in a terrible condition. It cannot give you anything. Why not go? There was a time earlier when before all this uh, nuclear thing exploded on Iran, we were in talks of total underwater pipeline okay. coming from Iran to India. Yeah, Gujarat. <laughs> it was to come from there to India and that failed because uh, the nuclear issue. So now you realize how the linking happens. If that had come through, then Iran would have made a lot of money not at the expense of US. Kosovo counters the South Stream actualization. Iraq war blocks bores for trade in other petro currencies than US. Syrian war blocks flow of Iraqi oil via Syria. Use of Kurds to disrupt Iran. Now Iraqi oil, they are looking for Kehan, but the Kurds disrupt that. So that is blocked. Libyan war, Ukraine war. So you ensure control of energy. How? To control usage, geoeconomic pressure on heartland. It's not working. They've still not been able to control a single drop, except for the little bit which comes about four, I think four lakh or five lakh barrels a day, which comes in BTC, which is like a tiny drop in the ocean. Mm. Nothing. So it's not working. My worry is now what? What are they going to do? What next? Now, last point. There, everyone is pushing for clean energy. What is the cost of technology? It's so expensive. Mm. You yourself are not changing it. And you're forcing the developing and especially the underdeveloped country, the global south. Look at the environment impact of raw materials that are needed just to make your clean energy. Who says it's clean? Maybe the outlet when output when it generates the electricity or energy may be clean, but the one before it and the environment cost the next point, the waste disposal. They are not environment friendly at all. So how do you call it green energy? If I go for electric vehicles, I need to double, in fact, or triple the grid. Electrical grid. Now, where does the Uh, energy source come for this extra grid and developed countries are not uh, utilizing it still. Why not? You must ask Al Gore, damn it, you have been the champion of this clean energy for so long. What has happened in your own US? Nobody has picked it up. You are a Democrat. Obama was there. Now Biden is there. Why are you not pushing them for clean energy? Sorry. Mm. 
So my understanding is you need a balance. Fossil fuels are going nowhere. I'm sorry. You can't get in a, like if you look at it, uh, pound for pound, if I look at the money involved, gas electrical energy is as clean as whatever clean energy you're talking about, solar or wind or you talk about gas, which is, that's why a lot, you look at uh, your countries in old Soviet space, you look at countries in Europe, they all use gas for a lot of their uh, energy needs. The, uh, there are a lot of gas-fired uh, uh, power transmission, power generation being done, electric electricity. Like I stayed for about three and a half years in old Soviet space, Tajikistan. All their uh, commercial vehicles are run on gas. Hmm. Commercial vehicles don't run on uh, few diesel or electricity. They've been running on gas donkeys years here. Whom are you fooling, Tajiks and others, that you got to be this? They're maintaining a balance. Okay. Now, the only uh, technology which is really clean, whether to make it and subsequent also are hydrogen fuel cells. Today it is becoming cheaper because in within that there is a lot of use of platinum which is very expensive. But today technology is uh, evolving. They are using various grades of steel. Some grades of steel they have found. Now, that is where you need to subsidize. They are not talking of fossil fuel, uh, uh, hydrogen fuel cells. Now the advantage of a hydrogen fuel cell is from a smallest vehicle to your two-wheeler to your heaviest ships and planes, it can run. <clears throat> your other clean energy cannot run. I can't run a plane on EV. Yaar. Kya baat kar rahe ho tum? <laughs> Chota plane chala sakte ho, bada plane kaise leke jaoge tum? Abhi tak wo technology nahi aaya hai. Yes, sir. Right? People sh sh uh, show a small plane of about six-seater plane. The chap had run and used a turboprop for running engine sort of a thing. I'm sorry, yeah. Look at the uh, time involved for travel then. And requirement currently of the world. Yeah. No, no. no. You, requ you require transcontinental flights. Exactly. Right? And you want to go fast. Now, if you want that, I don't think an el all electric aircraft will be able to help at the present level of technology. Whereas at the present level of technology, or most of the write-ups that have come on hydrogen fuel is that it can uh, be used as an engine for the smallest two-wheeler to the heaviest vehicle. It can do it, but it is expensive. So as it stands today, at least till the later part of this century, because this development of these technologies is going to take time, I am of the opinion that fossil fuels are here to stay. And you need to maintain a balance between fossil fuel and the uh, clean energy, whatever you want to bring. Like in our case also, Gadkari boss is saying that he every five kilometers is going to set up a charging station. Who the hell is going to give him electricity for that? Where is the grid? You can't just blindly uh, issue an order like I remember uh, in 2010 it was, what was it? no, 2013, when the then railway minister decided, uh, made a statement that by 2020 uh, railways will become clean. Still not. They are talking of maybe 50% or 60% of them being clean by 2035. You got to be logical. You can't just jump on that. Okay. So now, let me see what else I have. Can I remove I this I'm, one, sir? Yeah, yeah. Just remove this and I'll give you my last points that I have. Certainly, please, sir. Like, okay, food for thought. Hmm. Let the audience feel free to give their thoughts. US dollar is sustained basically because of, like I said, 
the uh, petrodollars mm. today and the US debt bonds. So if they keep telling you that fossil fuels will go, hello, clean energy is not traded in dollars. What happens to the US currency? You think they're going to do that? I don't think so. They will agree that everybody can't move away. So that means they know something, which means they also realize that everybody can't move away from fossil fuels. So the dollar is here to stay. Uh, but will it stay the course? The biggest mistake in my uh, analysis is they did in this Ukraine war when they weaponized the financial global commerce. Yeah. See, when you make a international trade organization and structure, maybe your institution, so what? That becomes a global common. Global common. You have weaponized that and you find more and more countries are shifting away, worrying about it. Yeah. Okay. How is the US going to manage this? Let me tell you two, three points. China. Across the BRI, they are pushing for yuan. They are telling if you have the uh, loans that you have to pay me back, pay me. They are pushing for that. Will they be successful? Depends. Paid back in yuan. Okay. And they had Xi Jinping had recently gone to Saudi Arabia. And he has been pushing the Saudis to sell oil to them in yuan. Mm. Okay. Next, the most China has not yet been successful. India has been relatively successful. You've broken away from the dollar, and you're now doing a lot of trade with the neighboring countries and with Russia in the rupee and the local currency. That is number one. That is breaking, breaking your uh, dollar hold on local trade. Regional trade may be dollar hold to try. Next, you're bringing in the e-rupee. It becomes very easy. And you're collecting gold for it. Yeah, it becomes very easy. Now, your rupee card is already acceptable in a whole lot of countries. countries 35 countries that directly hits the us visa and mastercard okay yes abhi footprint india mein aaya nahi hai but ek jo cheez hai which is breaking the hold of the dollar upi <laughs> you don't need anything yeah your UPI is acceptable in almost about 80 countries today. Even the UK has signed the agreement for yes. that. Germany, UK, France. Yeah. So it's not happening in a hurry. But multiple, the uh, Russians have linked their ruble to the gold. Gold. The biggest buyers of gold used to be India. Now it is China. China. India and China are dropping their uh, foreign reserve dependency on the dollar bond. Diversification. Diversification. No, it's not just the other currencies also because otherwise India had some in a lot in dollar, some in gold and some in the basket of currencies of SDR. What you're doing is you're shifting to more and more and more into gold. Mm -hmm. And last two years now, China is following suit and China is also buying into those dollars. Okay. So towards the later part of this, uh, towards the uh, 20, 35, 40 onwards, the US is start going to start feeling the pinch because by this excessive push, of uh, going in for the clean energy, when people start going for a balance into the clean energy and the fossil fuel, yeah, countries are not fools. They will also realize that it can't happen that way. The While they go for that balance, the amount of fossil fuel that they were buying, which has been replaced by the uh, clean energy portion, which is, may not be in dollars, 
your currency is going to take a hit. Mm. So petro dollar will not stand then. If petro dollars today was uh, out of the 60-65% of the trade, petro dollar was accounting for almost about 50-60% uh, of that. Now, if that falls to about 20%, how do you manage? What happens to your economy? You know, so uh, like in a lot of my talks, I say the Americans are not don't think far ahead. Yeah. They think short term, near to medium term. Uske aage nahi sochte. Ye long term impact hai tumara. Tumara dollar khatam ho jayega. Phir kya karoge? You have your deficit runs in almost about thirty trillion dollars or something like that. What are you going to do? Will you become the next Pakistan? <laughs> At that time, paise nahi honge tumare paas yar. Tum to dollar print karte ja rahe ho because Nobody is going to question you. Then how do you do that? So the geopolitics of oil in the 21st century is going to be a very, 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 I would say, interesting phase. Because what they succeeded, what they miss out is they succeeded in the 20th century in whatever shenanigans they were doing to gain control of that. Because you were not a globalized world. Yeah. Today okay. you are a globalized world. And that the Europe is realizing suddenly. You blindly followed the Americans and you impose sanctions on the Russians and you then try to say, no, 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 oil and gas, nahi. Fed, now you are trying to put a cap. Um, uh, Putin has openly said that I will not give uh, oil or gas to anyone who follows the cap. What do you do? You can't survive because without of that. And the Americans, they have suddenly realized the Americans are selling it to them at four times the rate that they give it to their own people. Macron when crying to the... That is standard with the Americans where they charge more with the when they export to subsidize their internal use. And this I say from the foreign military states. If you look at the cost of equipment which they give to their armies, to their military, and the cost of that equipment and the life cycle which they give to the equipment which they sell outside, you realize mm -hmm. that everything is subsidized for their use through the money they uh, make from the sales. That is how they're going to subsidize for them. Otherwise, shale oil and gas is very expensive. And the oil uh, extraction method that the West follows is almost one and a half times more expensive than the method followed by the Russians. Oh, really? Whether it be on mm -hmm. land or whether it be on the high seas. That's the that difference. Of that I didn't know. So. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah, because if the uh, cost, let us say, on land to for the US and the West for extracting oil <laughs> Even that's the same technology with the Middle East follows is say ten dollars. The Russians will have it around about five, about seven dollars or something. Sheesh. So they can keep putting these caps, it doesn't make a damn of a difference to them. Yeah, it doesn't. Oh, Pagano ki tarah to cap dala yaar. Aaj, in today's Saat rate, me. the Russian oil is selling at about 50 58, and you are putting a cap on 60. Whom are you fooling? <laughs> the then, cap has been put in the sense that even if it is taken like it is also being refined in Italy quietly, Greece is also doing it, India is also doing it. You take it, you refine it, and you sell it. China is doing so it. So this is yeah, China is also doing it. So this is to this is not to cap that Russian thing, this is to cap your sale rates. <laughs> And Russia has understood that and he said, if you put that cap, I'm not selling it to you. The prices go up. He makes more money. Of course they will go up. And he's happy. Yeah. That is where in, when you have globalized world interlinking, you run into big problems. The funny yeah. thing, Sam, sorry, you know, the idea of globalization was noble, but the way it was being portrayed, uh, uh, portrayed. Uh, it was not noble at all. 
the the way it was portrayed so that's what i'm trying to say the way it was portrayed is yeah. that boss the dream and this and that now the globalists you know the few that you know would have thought that by doing globalization and by being at the helm of the the the, the economic system of the world right and there's something i kind of did a short talk on yesterday you hold the economic strings of the world you want to basically control see i heard your talk yesterday so to a large extent i agree with you but the globalization was for this only but it for fell they flat. thought they thought that they would be able to gain control of the market of these developing countries and underdeveloped countries but in a lot of developed countries like india also it failed <laughs> and now you have a large chunk you are exporting there others also exporting and now they got caught in their own lies and you can't do anything now you are crying after you have created all the problems in ukraine no 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 nation first nation first it doesn't work like look at us you outsource everything to china a lot of things get made in mm. japan south korea a lot of things comes from india bangladesh now you say like uh, trump had also said america first and biden is looking at how to go about doing it your chaps have forgotten the skills yaar yeah? it's not there see your education system there also follows the needs of the environment yeah so you have created managers you have created your scientists who will work on various things you have created your managers and chief executives o floor mein kon kaam karega तो अब तुम बोल रहे हो नेशन फर्स्ट तो तुम्हारे पास कहा है स्किल्ड लेबर वेर हैव यू डन दिस थिंग आई कैन हेल्प बट लाफ सो यू नो आई डोंट नो इफ यू नोटिस आई बीन स्मोकिंग द होल शो नॉर्मली आई डोंट डू दैट बट सी द एंटायर थिंग इज सो फनी इन वन ऑफ द सेज व्हेन आई हैड मेंशनड अबाउट रीलोकेटिंग डीकपलिंग एंड थिंग्स कमिंग टू इंडिया आई हैड सेड आल्सो इट टेक्स टाइम i gave the example of the shifting from uh bengal to west bengal to gujarat of tata tata nano ka factory yes yes sir okay it took them a year if you go through there's a documentary also they had made mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and they had put it out on youtube also what all they had done it took them a year to train their staff because the, and the trained people they have to train on their ethos their way of functioning their uh, smts which they have which is special to their uh, this thing to ab tumne kahan training shuru ki hai tumhare bandon ki so let's say madness. you want to shift any factory out there how do you do it it's absolute madness yeah it it doesn't happen overnight and what, abhi i was laughing that? we had banned tiktok yeah in 2020 trump had banned tiktok just before he demitted office the day biden came to power he cancelled that yeah. and today today he is banning it again bhai do saal mein kya badal gaya you have not even made a statement that why did you remove it then and why are you banning it now again that was sheer politics sir ki oh boss so, uh, people will say this is also politics yaar mm. <laughs> the hypocrisy of the whole situation just astonishes me astonishes me sir and you know the problem is uh, they call us uncivilized and not really thinking forward and you guys don't know what's happening and this and that i you know my i've actually had a little bit of a tussle with one of these americans who said this and i said you know you guys have what population 338 million the half of 80 90% of a population not even yours theek hai come from here there and everywhere leaving that apart man do you know if you calculate the size square the size of america and you put the same density as indian population into america i said you guys will not last for two days 
you have you are the richest country in the world and you you have streets where people are dying of hunger 200000 americans died because of fentanyl poisoning in the last year sir yeah that's quite a sizable when you convert this into statistics as a percentage of the population is very high that's what i'm trying to come to yeah the idea that that their, their, their priorities today is amazingly wrong it is a, i sometimes i'm not amazed at that because that's the way they have been brought up like when we talk of pakistanis and we say that this is what they are being taught in their schools and college in their schools of jihad and other things what do you think the white man is being taught in his schools of how powerful a race they are and they are the defenders of the globe and you look at the and for any country to understand where they come from you just have to look at their movie most of their movies would deal with that so and so thing is happening it is happening in america but the globe is at threat yeah the underlying theme is globe is at threat and we are protecting the mankind so if you're going to this is the psychological indoctrination of a child and as he grows up this is what he knows and then when he sees the comes out and understands and sees the other side he he is in a state of a shock he is confused then because what they don't realize is that today the comprehensive national power of a large number of countries have come very close to them mm. and so that's why they are openly not supporting them and over a period of time yeah like the statement we have you can fool all the people all the time some people all the time but you can't fool all the people all the time all the people only sometime so the global south for some time you fooled them but now they've seen through your gimmick yeah so the most amazing part and this is the last thing i'm going to say guys please start shooting in your comments and questions and sir you know i think this has been an insightful presentation the way you put it across i think a lot of things that have been answered here and i would i would call this as one of the causes for what is happening in in europe today yes you know the the serbia issue we know the ukraine now it's of course a you know burning issue so the only thing i want to talk about right now is about the dependency of the west on russia as per se uh they try and put across a factor that russia is not the largest producer of oil some statistic this that the other of not oil but energy you know let's let's take it in comparison why are you depending on them yeah so <laughs> let's take take that into comparison it is it's just energy that i am talking about russia is if you remove russians from the market today right which is what they're trying to do and the oil price today and there was a calculation done in that oil price index magazine which is there they had done a calculation to say that if we remove russian energy from the market the energy prices will go three and a half times up yeah it will go anything above 150 dollar a barrel and it will never come down and so, that's what see. they asked us to do when they told us to not buy or russian oil but nobody is listening to them see the simple thing is you've taken out the venezuelan oil from the market because they were not giving it to you and the uh, socialists came to power of their even now you want them but you are trying to dictate to them the cost and maduro has not listened to them he says sorry you want my oil it will be on my terms not on your terms you taken out the iranian oil from the market as it is africa you to dust africa to khatam kar diya tumne pura yaar you mean, destroyed a whole continent continent the sudan continent is floating on oil you know there there are certain yes. places in south sudan you can't do agriculture because when no, you the dig the land the oil comes out the problem with south sudan is they do, they know oil pipelines which comes out from south sudan 
ऑल ऑल पाइपलाइन गो थ्रू नॉर्थ सुदान उसको तुमने तोड़ दिया बिकॉज वो मुस्लिम है ये क्रिश्चियन है इसको कर दो वो शॉर्ट आउट ही नहीं हो रहा है तुम्हारा रिफाइनरी एक तरफ है ऑयल पाइपलाइन आर ऑल गोइंग एंड टू द पोर्ट्स एंड एवरीथिंग गोइंग इज ऑल नॉर्थ यार चलो तुमने the... तोड़ भी दिया साले इन्वेस्ट करके पाइपलाइन तो बना दो इन्वेस्ट करने के लिए तुम्हारे पास कहां पैसा है क्योंकि तुम तो अपनी कंपनी को दोगे तुम्हारी कंपनी कौन बनाती है पाइपलाइन सो आई वुड गो ऑन एंड ऑन द होल नाइट asking questions about this because this subject is to me very dear why and i have said this like if you if you read in, if you are interested in geopolitics then you must read on all these how currencies are manipulated oil where does it feed in all this forms part of geoeconomics tumko trade karna hai to tumko energy chahiye yaar tumhari industry kaise chalegi bagair energy ke सर डेफटॉप नहीं चलेगा कुछ नहीं चलेगा तुम्हारा तुम्हारे शिप्स कैसे चलेंगे इंडस्ट्रियल रेवल्यूशन द करंट यू मे से आई एम गोइंग इन टू फिफ्थ इंडस्ट्रियल रेवल्यूशन इंटरनेट ऑफ थिंग्स जो तुम बोल दो बेसिक बैक में द बैक एंड इज योर एनर्जी हाउ आर यू गोइंग टू प्रोवाइड एनर्जी फॉर दो थिंग्स एंड दैट इज वेयर पेपे एस्कोबार हु यूज टू राइट अ लॉट ऑफ दीज थिंग्स आजकल एशिया टाइम्स में उसका ज्यादा आता नहीं है हेड कॉल्ड इट पाइपलाइनिस्तान दैट्स वाई इन माई टॉपिक हेडिंग यूड है पाइपलाइनिस्तान दिस आई बोरोड इट फ्रॉम पेपे एस्कोबार ये पाइपलाइनिस्तान that's the way it goes yeah africa amazes me let me just say this and putin for all for all anything else i mean for all his wrongs or whatever it is i don't care about all that stuff i mean americans are no dood ka dhula no bhi dood ka dhula nahi hai yaar koi dood ka dhula nahi hai koi nahi nobody hum bhi nahi hai koi nahi hai koi nahi hai yaar koi nahi hai let's understand that but putin for for what whatever russia is sake russian sake i think he's good for russia and i think He's holding it. Yeah, his. Uh, apna, what do you say? That survey acceptability rate is over eighty-three percent. Yeah. Or what? The, the Russians know what the game is, sir. Somehow, I kind of feel that we 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 misunderstand Russia and we we think that the Russians are a little slow. They no, know what's happening. No, no. Yes. Anyway, sir, let's get into the questions. There are loads of them, and let's kind of answer yeah. them. uh thank you mr hard breaking 40 mr miss I'm, i'm not sure but thank you so much and please welcome to the community uh navin sir thank you so much for your contribution general nayan sir a uh, very insightful to request please recommend a book on geopolitics of energy and do a similar overview session on essential minerals okay i'll essential minerals yes like i said you just type out pepe escobar i started in the early 90s reading from him asia times se wahan se then i have migrated to lot there are lot of books which are there so and uh, but i once you read him uh, you will be able to grasp and understand a lot of things he writes it in a very simple and explains it in a very simple manner pepe p e p e pepe escobar and he is known as pipelinestan escobar <laughs> okay so he talks about all these pipelines and other things and why it came about those days when exxon mobil was kachardi kala everybody spoke of condoleezza rice aaj to koi poochta hi nahi hai usko yaar kidhar hai wo yes he was all powerful yeah exxon mobil was powerful. all powerful at that time and she was all powerful and uh, wo bhi tha na uska kya हेलीबर्टन के लॉग्स एंड समथिंग अपना चीनी चीनी गया वो हेलीबर्टन भी गया कोई बात नहीं करता बट सो दैट्स द वे इट इज यार ऑयल बिकॉज द यूएस डॉलर सर्वाइव ऑन ऑयल से पीरियड 
if the oil sales fall the us dollar collapses collapses and if the oil trade is done in some other currency us dollar collapses today the... does the us have the capacity to intervene india is also doing it russia is also doing it china is also doing it he is trying it against russia not succeeding will it... does he have the gumption to do it against india and china i don't think so that's because somebody else is fighting for him in ukraine yeah. he is not fighting who's going to fight for him here nobody so he is mm. trying to prop up one of the ways is to sort out india is to prop up pakistan but pakistan ke to apne vaat lagi hui hai yaar nahi dusra as i think the chinese are highly stupid they picked the wrong time to pick a fight with india because this is not the time <laughs> They, 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 they. Yeah, now of course he, there's no turning back from this and there's no trust which is ever going to get formed but he is lost face heavy face so he can keep telling stupid. whatever this this yeah. whole thing could have been done so smoothly if xi jinping wo, had his unki ab wo hi bolta hu na it is the way you are brought up and way you think yeah the americans like we had discussed they think in a particular way because they have been taught if you look at the common pakistani today just forget it there is no aman ki aasha with the common public people who are there they have been brought up on jihad he knows nothing else if you look at the chinese this is what they have been taught and this is how they understand that if something happens inside you hit out outside and you save face and come away little realizing that all the other countries around in the neighborhood have uh, increased their uh, national power can you do it if, forget india can you do anything to vietnam he can't chance nahi hai right what can he do in taiwan aankhe dikha dega himmat hai like the other day i was telling you na you try plotting all the places where he is doing his uh, missile firing it will be out of the ez what they have worked out with taiwan taiwan ke ez ke bahar hai uske andar nahi hai he may overfly over the ez but the missile landing ka jo spot hai is all outside the ez outside nahi hai himmat yaar you shared that uh, video with me of how they are living in high altitude ghanta yaar are you gone there as a damn tourist that you are sitting in an oxygen tent You got to acclimatize yourself and sit there without that oxygen. हाँ बैठा थोड़ा चल के आ गया तो वो बैठा हुआ oxygen लगा के. How are you acclimatized your body and how are you going to fight in that high altitude and super high altitude area? क्या बात कर रहे हो यार? वो तो ऐसा है ऐसा that that guy is a walking time bomb. One tread he splinter on his oxygen cylinder he boom. No 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 you don't need to do anything it's hapo. The high altitude sickness will hit him. थोड़ा भी एक्सपोजर के लिए जाएगा लुक ही कांट कैरी दैट ऑक्सीजन बॉटल बिकॉज ही हैज़ टू कैरी ऑल द बैटल लोड्स ऑन हिज बैक ऑक्सीजन सिलेंडर डजन कम ही विल डाई ऑफ हापो हमको हाई ऑल्टीट्यूड सिकनेस हमें कुछ करने की जरूरत ही नहीं पड़ेगी दिस इज वॉट द लंगर गप इज कमिंग आउट फ्रॉम लद्दाख वेर दे आर फेसिंग अ लॉट ऑफ प्रॉब्लम या नेक्स्ट थैंक यू बहेश फॉर दू पुस्तिक Naveen Sab, thank you so much. On minerals post COVID, debt trap being exposed. How is China being perceived in places like Africa and South America versus India? Going back to securing stakes, will it be easier for India to go forward? Excellent question, Naveen. This has always been my point of talk uh, on these issues when people say, "See, every all country want to grow." Mm-hmm. there is no country which doesn't want to improve its comprehensive national park i can tell a country that you don't if i tell a country okay you don't take money from them are you in a position to give that money <laughs> right yeah. so we are giving in our neighborhood mm. do you have the deep pockets to give to latin america you don't अमेरिका बोलता है जमीन पे तो कुछ नहीं आता बिकॉज हिज लॉज डोंट परमिट इट बिकॉज हिज लॉज सेज दैट वॉट एवर एड दी अमेरिकन आर गिविंग हैज टू कम टू एन अमेरिकन कंपनी हैज टू कम टू एन अमेरिकन दैट मनी अल्टीमेटली हाउ डिफरेंट इज इट फ्रॉम द चाइनीज डिप्लॉइंग चाइनीज कंपनी राइट सो दैट इज वाई यू फाइंड देर इज so much of uh, 
problem that the global south is facing to give a simple point un is also an i would pardon my language is a big idiot you made the sustainable development goals in 2015 and said mm. to be achieved by 2030 kisne who has given them that 15 diya tha do aur add karke 17 kar diya asian development bank based on the sdg and for each of the sdg they had given the various targets and goals to be achieved yeah asian development bank did a wonderful sur- service they released the report in february 2017 at that point in time the total money required for asian countries 30 trillion dollars there are 50 of our countries okay now realize how many out of that utna uh, us developed con- developing countries and developed countries won't need that much so it was working out to virtually for the weaker countries almost close to a trillion dollar a year hmm kharch karne ki kabiliyat kahan yaar logo mein a nation any nation you take has the capacity to spend x amount of money कितना जोर लगा तो उससे ज्यादा खर्च नहीं कर सकते आप कितना जोर लगा लो उससे ज्यादा खर्च नहीं कर सकते एग्जीक्यूट करने के लिए फाइनाइट टाइम लगता है एंड बल्क ऑफ द मनी वाज इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर वाटर एंड ऑन दीज इश्यूज सो योर नेशंस विली नीली विल बी गोइंग बैक टू चाइना चाइना ऑल्सो डजेंट हैव दैट मच मनी टू डे बट इट स्टिल हैज सम मनी एज कम्पेयर टू द अमेरिकन बिकॉज दे फॉलो द अमेरिकन थिंग दे प्रिंट यू वन और जो इनको डॉलर में आता है वो डॉलर में दे देते हैं लोगों को बाहर जब जितना युवान उन्होंने प्रिंट करना है वो प्रिंट करके अपने लोगों को दे रहा है वो जितना दे सकता है इन्फ्लेशन नहीं बढ़ जाए उतना प्रिंट कर देता है इज फॉलोइंग द अमेरिकन मॉडल दैट्स वाई इज नॉट कोलेप्स्ड सो यू विल स्टिल फाइंड यस इन आर नेबरहुड वी आर गिविंग बट ही इज ऑल्सो गिविंग okay so that is where you you don't try to i have always opined don't try to counter china balance him show that there people that mm-hmm. this is the alternate way you can absorb only so much i will give you and step by step we will achieve something and you will find countries who will come to you and you should join hands with japan south korea and all these like minded countries of the region forget russia if america wants to come most welcome yaar hum to bol rahe hain america ko sara ikattha karke chalo kar chalte wo apna apna karta rehta hai wo he doesn't want he doesn't know partnership na he knows only alliance under him where he will dictate what is to be done तो ये है चाइना के साथ तो यू कांट स्टॉप पीपल गोइंग बिकॉज और कहीं से पैसा नहीं आ रहा अपने फार्मर नहीं करता है बैंक से पैसे वैसे नहीं मिलते हैं तो वो मुनीम से लेता है मरता क्या ना करता है ऑप्शन नहीं है ऑप्शन नहीं है वी कैन यूजिंग थोरियम रियक्टर्स टू जनरेट इलेक्ट्रिसिटी सोलो कैन बी ऑल्सो Uh, can be used also depends on area and green hydrogen uh, to use to be used in transportation so we can reduce crude dependency or to use on this stuff. thorium is environmentally very degrading very dangerous getting out thorium we have uh, the technology for using thorium but that is where the problem has happened and that is why you haven't gone the thorium way yes that's why i'm saying you have to have a balance it cannot be just because the so called clean is not clean your uh, initial raw material required to make that system to give you this kind of energy is environmentally degrading yes when you're using it it doesn't generate so much of carbon that's fine carbon footprint is not there or very low that's fine but when its life is over that waste also creates a problem of waste disposal so you're very rightly pointed out 
we have to create a balance we may have to work out a better technology of how to uh, get thorium hmm. which is not extraction yeah so if we can improve that technology we should be working towards that i am sure people may be working on it so hmm. if once you are able to get something which is not environmentally degrading then thorium is fine otherwise more and more we are shifting towards plutonium yes sir make uranium as a fast breeder reactor and then you get your plutonium and use plutonium, plutonium. it's uh, considered more safe than uranium but the problem is still disposal yes yeah but i must add in this uh, university i think uk ka tha yeah us ka tha i think uk ka tha birmingham or was it berkeley what they did was they created a diamond out of the uh, waste from the reactor the nuclear fuel rods mm. and created a, a nuclear uh, battery at the moment it is small your duracell type of battery which can give about 1.5 volts now if you can improve that and last for 1000 to 5000 years you don't need to charge and it doesn't give out any radiation wo oh, simple hai they just foil it and that's it ha uh, nahi wo they create that diamond and uske through banate yeah. hain wo so i don't know but if they are people from bark which is where all the research work is done a lot of research work is done if they can uh, make it into a bigger battery it will last 5000 years and by then what happens is its half life is over so even if you dispose it off it does not generate any nuclear radiation indeed sir because the half life is over yeah sir i want to add to your conversation that uh, that the usa after the snub of the gold bracketed dollar to france have convinced saudi to sell oil in dollar all the conference is just for oil including iran revolution no oh, yes, yes 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 i told you in the beginning it's everything to do to control oil and the aim has been that either i will control the oil or oil and gas uh, energy or i will disrupt it so wherever my control is gone i will disrupt that area and that's why you see all the battles in this oil rich areas two parts sir uh, i mean usa uh, has whole dollar surrounded around oil and gas but these are the same people who are pushing for renewables they not dumb enough to understand that this would collapse the usd and i'm sure they have something planned for this uh, that's why they're calling it the great reset by the wef i don't think so they are pushing it essentially because we are eating into the pie of uh, as you industrialize more the availability of oil and gas there are more countries wanting more oil and gas oil and gas uh, the requirement increases the supply has a finite side to it that he can only make so much see one of the reasons why opec said no initially they said yes and then they were they said no what who said yes were the politicians who said no were the technocrats because if i produce oil it is crude which is coming up i have a capacity to refine correct and i have a capacity to store extra that crude that is there which goes into that refinery i bring out more barrels where the hell am i going to store it how am i going to refine it i have to add to my refining capacity so that is the problem which comes is that with the x amount of million barrels a day which are being produced the number of people who want it are increasing and it is the push that they are giving is all to the global south they are asking us they are asking the global south to reduce the carbon footprint they are not they are guzzling their oil and gas so the, my reading is they don't want us to bite into the pie of their energy if i start biting into the pie of their energy then how does he live his lifestyle he can't mm, 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 mm. it's the beautiful clean energy push that they have brought which they are asking you to do where are they going for clean energy they are not going for clean energy as yet i don't see like we have 
run a full train on with solar panels where the requirement has reduced because that solar panel is used for each compartment for its in house requirement for electricity electricity and so you are running the train with lesser amount of energy which is because that is required only to propel the train yeah otherwise the energy used in a train is not just for propelling it but providing the in house needs over the entire compartments your in house compartments we have run started running trains with having your solar panels on top have they done it they have not done it yeah, and the they can't even force no no they can't even force it because those companies are private companies amtrak yeah. ko bol sakta hai kon bolega amtrak ko the best thing is that we are the only armed force in the world that is actually use biomass fuel yeah most of the remote areas you look at the bsf also yeah. all along the border fence most of their uh, in uh, rajasthan area at least most of their uh, posts and other things are solar powered air yeah they not doing anything they won't they won't they won't change their lifestyle yeah trump to bluntly bol diya tha we will not change our lifestyle so i don't buy into that my view is different they are not doing it for anything else they have not changed so since the quantum of oil trade is going to be the same as long as that quantum is traded in petrodollars us is okay whatever amount is there currently uh, because the american nuclear companies went bust the russian project we had at kundagal kolum was disrupted of course of course a huge amount of money because when the 123 agreement was signed they expected that their companies will be given india didn't give it to them the main yeah. contenders were the french and the uh, russians okay and when they asked for mm-hmm. it why we were not doing it they were told where are you making your uh, nuclear companies we are not sitting here to be your guinea pigs yaar तुम बोल रहे हो कि नए नए तुमने बना लिए आई वॉज इन सर्विस एट दैट टाइम एंड इन वन ऑफ अट दिस थिंग इट केम आउट वेरी क्लियर वी सेट यू आर वॉन्टिंग टू ट्रीट अस एज गिनी पिक्स वी हैड इनफ ऑफ गिनी पिक्स इन दी एटी फोर यूनियन कार्बाइड ब्लास्ट वी सेट थैंक यू वी आर नॉट गोइंग डाउन दैट पाथ एनी मेर यू वॉन्ट टू मेक इट प्रूव इट दैट यू हैव यूज इट फॉर फाइव और सिक्स ईयर्स और टेन ईयर्स if you can't say 10 years at least 5 years in your country if you can do it mm-hmm. same Then thing we we'll bring it here because what we said what the french and the russians are giving is once which they are using they are using it they are bringing it here i am comfortable you are not making anything you say you have designed something that means i am a guinea pig sorry that is the problem and that is why they tried to disrupt it and when we got after all those ngos who were doing it and especially ford foundation oh, then the, the reports started coming three out about religious freedom and this and that yeah yeah three and four the kundam kulam plan now they have gone full yeah uh general sir mind boggling presentation thank you thank you, uh, yeah, thank you for a small compliment we need the us in prop up civil unrest in india because we are not at work <laughs> they have been trying a lot yeah they have been trying a lot wo tumhara adani ka port ban raha see you will get into a big uh, become a big industrial base moment your sagarmala project comes into place right and kerala coast ke paas that port which adani was to make against which such the priests also came out it was a priest who was leading the complete agitation out there Thanks on ground right. okay they they won't want you to become a major challenger to the global trade and become a big uh, industrial hub so it happens it is happening they uh, will your uh, funding which came from canada and i'm sure came a lot from us also for all those farmer strikes here yeah yeah, yeah. So, Canada, US, and UK, sir. Yeah, yeah. Don't be under the impression that they are not attempting to disrupt you. They are. They are, and they will. All the time. Yeah. So that's why I always say you have to strike a balance between economic growth and 
ensuring that your security forces also get their due for their modernization and capability development. And when I say security, is not just the military; it's also your police. Police. Yeah. Internal security. Internal security. Intelligence. There's that. Everything. Yeah. Complete. 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 Police covers yeah. everything. Your paramilitary also comes under the police. All these people have a huge task to play. That is the multi-domain threat. And like I, I think, यहीं पे बताया था. Yeah, George Engel का book है, Full Spectrum mm. Dominance, 2008 की nine का published है. But this Full Spectrum Dominance, what he talks about, has been going on since the 80s. And once the Soviet Union fell, that was when uh, project of a new American century. Okay, PNAC. Now they don't talk much about it. But this full spectrum dominance of dominating the globe and every aspect of governance and life in the globe—that was the charter of the project of the new American century, which they term national order. Yeah, yeah. All this rules-based freedom, uh, exporting of democracy. George Soros, God bless his soul, wherever he is, uh, he was one of the players in this. Yeah? Starting. Thank you, Naveenza, for the contribution. Stupid question: When using gas for electric heating is so clean, why doesn't India use more of it? Is it all to do with pipeline? Is transporting gas on ships too expensive? Under pipeline, chahiye. You have a gas mafia, gas cylinder mafia within India, yeah. In Tamil Nadu, I don't get piped gas, yeah. I'm back to cylinder gas. Eight years I was in Delhi. I was with uh, piped gas. Yeah. It's so simple, so easy. Yeah, piped water, piped gas. You have mafias because, like a lot of politicians and your councillors, they have their uh, water tankers. They have all these godowns for your gas, gas cylinders, gas cylinder with banana, bharna, local labor. Jo sara hota hai. They are their vote banks. They won't want your pipelines to come up here. It hurts, eats into their vote bank. They don't understand that concept of skill development. The new skills are needed. Even if the pipeline is made to sustain the pipeline, maintain the pipeline, you need people with new skills. वो नहीं समझ आता उनको ना उनको पैसे मिल रहे हैं, पैसे बन रहे हैं. So that's why I said it is a huge mafia within India. You go to Gujarat, and I would bluntly say it is thanks to Modi. You go to Gujarat, you don't see gas cylinders anywhere. Yeah, it's all piped gas everywhere. You don't have to depend on anything. Apna on kia, jalao or band karo or jao. Yeah, khatam. It's so simple, so clean. It's coming in a big way within in Bombay, but I don't know rest of Maharashtra. It's not there, but Gujarat everywhere piped gas. Yeah, hmm. where you need that political will. गैस तो आ रहा है ना तेरे को एलएनजी कहाँ से मिल रहा है सीएनजी कहाँ से मिल रहा है तुमको आ तो रहा है ना एलएनजी भी तुमको मिल रहा है ना पीएनजी तुम डाल रहे हो ना सिलेंडर वगैरह में डाल के तुम इस्तेमाल कर रहे हो ना जी तो गैस तो आ रहा है ऑल यू नीड टू डू इज लेआउट पाइपलाइंस अगर गुजरात में हो सकता है तो सब जगह हो सकता है पोलिटिकल विल होना चाहिए अभी यूपी में होना शुरू हुआ है यूपी कर्नाटका में हो रहा है यूपी में हो रहा है जी वाइज इंड इंडिया गॉन ऑल आउट ऑन न्यूक्लियर लाइक फ्रांस द इंटरनल क्रोनी कैपिटलिज्म और एक्सटर्नल एलिमेंट्स यूजिंग पब्लिक फेयर न्यूक्लियर हैज इट्स ओन प्रॉब्लम्स यार गेटिंग यूरेनियम creating your fuel rods fir once the fuel rods have been consumed how do you dispose the waste kahan waste ko dispose karoge france ka to history hai so many places where they have their own island territories where they have disposed of their nuclear waste so that is an issue na it's that's why you didn't go all nuclear so why that's why i said generation may be clean But the production portion for the raw material and the disposal, they are not clean at all. And the biggest problem is the nuclear waste disposal.
uh, did we have a choice decades ago? Most of us weren't here decades ago, but can understand how sanctioned after uh, how we were sanctioned after nuclear tests in Pakistan got caught free. No, no, no. Pakistan also didn't go free. That was they the sanctioned us and call. they sanctioned us, but they suddenly realized that it didn't have an impact, and so uh, Stroke Talbot came and did some talks and a lot of talks with Apna late Jaswant Singh. Stroke Talbot is also no more now. Hmm. And they had their talks and everything. And that result, actually, that is what resulted in one, two, three. Manmohan Singh did nothing. UPA did nothing. All those talks were done then. And then it was processed. And then the nuclear agreement came. And then the, but it was done in, in a bipartisan way. Bipartisan. That much I will give uh, bipartisan. And that much I must give credit to Manmohan Singh. Manmohan Singh and. Uh, uh... Pranab Mukherjee, Manmohan Singh, Bajpai, Pranab Mukherjee, Jaswan Singh. Ye char the. Couldn't get his name on my lips. I'm sorry. <laughs> Pranab Mukherjee, ye char the. And that's how it saw through the UPA also. And then finally the one, two, three agreement came through. Okay. So, uh, see, it was a very racist comment that the Congress had come out with. Because our rate of growth was to be only three to four percent. And they used to call it the Hindu race of growth. Hindu I don't know growth. which in which dustbin secular rate of growth kyun bola tha, in which dustbin secularism went there. Because they had in uh, secularism, by the way, was not part of a constitution when our constitution assembly was formed. It was put in 1975 after emergency was declared when Indira Gandhi had put all the opposition in jail. And she could do whatever she want. And so she brought in all these socialism and secularism all were brought into the constitution by her then during emergency you must remember that mm. and then when you were laughed at by the others congress used to say this is our hindu rate of growth hello that was your rate of growth not that has got nothing to do with hinduism i call it a very racist statement yeah, yeah. they they had a license raj you'd be surprised like bajaj used to make scooters he was given permission for X scooters. That is it. If the market demanded Y, he could not make Y. He had to take permission. And so he had to give his cut. And that is how the corruption started. It's called License Raj. It used to take 14, 13 or 14 years to get a scooter. Uh, no, six years. If you My dad took... Yeah, I'm talking of when I yeah, was about, going to book, it was taking six years. Okay. Just to get a wristwatch. HMT in Bangalore used to make the Janta wristwatch. You had to go and book. A register was maintained. You wrote your name, paid half the amount up front, and you had to wait six months. And after six months, you went and checked. And if you're lucky, you got your watch. Okay, and that opened up the floodgates for all the corruption and the smuggling and everything used to come from uh, UAE and all smuggling used to take place. All these smugglers and all ke story, ye, ye us ke true stories hai, yaar. Tum, if you're not getting anything, you will buy smuggled goods. Yaar. So if you wanted a telephone connection, you applied for a telephone connection, it will take you two years to get a telephone yeah. connection. Yeah, Because for anything and, ev anything and everything was a limit laid down. And the government and the bureaucrats used to say, okay, you're given a permit, so you can make like telephone connection, so you have a tar, you have a telephone line. So you have a telephone line. So, that telephone box banane ke liye to permission chahiye na bande ko extra mm -hmm. sir, that was the life you were living transistor in. license nahi hota tha oh bilkul to run a transistor to run a radio you needed to have a license at home yaar and they would come and check by the way yeah usko renew karana padta tha every year i've been through that grind line mein khade ho ke paise de ke aaya hu main yaar transistor mm -hmm. aur radio ke liye license i am you young know. but not that young so i remember all this no, nonsense even that it is still on. there you go abroad you take a license your license is for life yeah here the license is not for life here your driving license the sal bolta hai, now i am past 60 i get it only for five years five years and after 70 i will not get a license yeah 
नहीं जनरल क्वेश्चन इंडिया बीइंग ऑन द इंडिया बेटिंग बिग ऑन ग्रीन हाइड्रोजन एथेनॉल ब्रांडिंग एट 20 परसेंट ह्यूज फॉरेक्स सेवर नाउ व्हाट डू यू थिंक रिगार्डिंग दिस पॉइंट्स हाइड्रोजन लाइक आई टोल्ड यू इट्स इट्स एक्सपेंसिव करंट टेक्नोलॉजी हैज इट इनसाइड द हाइड्रोजन फ्यूल सेल्स दे यूज अ लॉट ऑफ प्लैटिनम इज यूज्ड एंड प्लैटिनम इज अ रेयर मेटल इट्स वेरी एक्सपेंसिव because that doesn't react with hydrogen so now they have latest technology that they have brought in is they bringing in various uh grades of steel new grades of steel which doesn't react with h2o otherwise wo zyada h2o hota rahega to wo tumhara rust hona shuru ho jata ji so they getting you very high grade of steel yeah we have not yet gone back to the level of the steel which has been used in qutub minar <laughs> if we can get that then your hydrogen becomes cheaper then once it you have achieved that then hydrogen becomes cheaper Absolutely. ethanol excellent yaar brazil to pura ethanol use karta hai yaar mix it saves you a lot of money hum to sugarcane bahut grow karte hain but the only problem with sugarcane is it, like cotton it takes in a lot of water so we can do methane also sir ye yeah. no, 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 sab, sab sugarcane wagera baki methane to tumko to तुम्हारे बायोमास से भी निकलता है काफी तवेलों में से निकालो नो नॉट ओनली दैट योर फूड वेस्ट आल्सो या या योर फूड वेस्ट एंड एवरीथिंग दैट बायोमास ऑफ फूड वेस्ट एंड ऑल गिव्स यू अ लॉट ऑफ मीथेन सो यू कैन यूज इट आई एम वेरी दैट्स वेरी करेक्ट व्हाट यू सेड इट सेव्स यू अ लॉट ऑफ फॉरेन एक्सचेंज एंड बिकम्स चीपर फॉर द कॉमन मैन मच चीपर या या मच मच चीपर देयर नो क्वेश्चन अबाउट इट So, last few questions. Uh, what uh, control does the US have over Gulf Energy? Uh, they are less than ten percent dependent. Are they disrupting the Gulf? Yeah, like I told you, it's all petrodollars. They overwrite the survival of that controlling dynasty, and all the reserves are held in dollar bonds. उसको फ्रीज कर देगा तो इसकी दुवाट लग गई यार. So. if he has to shift the gulf has to slowly slowly shift out start buying uh, gold that's why uh, saudi arabia is betting so heavily on neom look at the kind of diversification that uae has gone into so that yeah. their dependency on petrodollar starts reducing they are very keen on that The and that is why they're not has been, sorry but the narrative that has been told to us is you know the oil will finish some day no. so they will have to you know uh, rely on other sources and kind of ensure their survival no 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 so they have already started diversification and of course like i said neom which is closer to the negev desert up north northwest of uh, saudi arabia on the red sea is this new city of neom that they are making where they want to diversify uae is already much ahead of him so uae uh, has already started uae has laws on the books but they won't imply them they say yeah, yeah. so the they are uh, diversifying a lot so yeah. uh, long term their dependency on petrodollars will also go down so the us hold on that will start going down you see us has suddenly realized it's folly biden mm-hmm. to refuse to speak to both the uae and saudi arabia saudi arabia because for what mbs did to khashoggi ji and uae because he has been supporting mbs as if biden now, is any do? any lesser yeah no no dada giri hai na yaar wo apne aap ko kapu di tuti kapi samajhta hai ab kya hua 2 saal baad to apne muh leke aaye ki nahi uske paas ki bhai uske baad kya hua ye mila ye yeah kuch nahi hua only god He got nothing. That's all he got. Actually, look, no, no. Look it's at the not. kind of research. If you look at the two things, 
Yeah. How was Biden received Jinping. when he landed in Saudi Arabia? Vis-a-vis, -vis, how was Xi Jinping received when he landed in Saudi Arabia? Yeah. Message would have gone to Biden loud and clear. Loud and it was embarrassing. I mean, there are there are a lot of Americans who were saying that this is a national embarrassment. Why this did he have no to person. go? He could have sent somebody else. Yeah. Bhik mangne gaye, bhik mangne gaye the usse. So let's end this show on a very, very interesting uh, joke that uh, Naveen has put out. And this <laughs> reminds yeah. me of, uh, you know, good old times in India as well. Uh, on the license, it reminds me of, of a Soviet joke by Reagan. Man goes to buy an automobile. <laughs> this is a 10-year wait. So he asked to come back in 10 years. He asked to come in the morning or the afternoon. The man behind the counter says, 10 years is a long time. Why do you ask if the morning or the afternoon? The man says, my plumber is coming in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 License Raj was like that. Yeah, It's terrible. My, yeah, dad booked his, my dad booked his car when my elder brother was born. And he got his car after one year after my sister was born. Four years later. My sis, brother and sister, ke beech mein about, we are about two, two and a half years ke gap here. Because he didn't, he said he didn't go for the ambassador because the waiting year was 10 years. So yeah. he went for then Fiat 1100. Ah, Pure Italian. Italian model. It was, it was, no, no, it was a completely knocked down kit, just assembled. Because it had those suicide doors. It was called Italian model. Yeah, yeah. Wo samne se, samne ah, the. <laughs> suicide doors. <laughs> Front door samne the aur baki aise the. And you know, I'll, again, same thing. So my dad got commissioned in 73, sir. And after commissioning and stuff like that, I think the squadron commander called him up and said, come here. All of you chaps got commissioned. Shadi wadi karoge, ja ke scooter book karke ho. So all of them, like good soldiers, went to the canteen, booked the, booked the scooter and came back. Time nikalta gaya. You know, when I was born, uh, about 15 years later, <laughs> 10, 12 years later, then the scooter finally came. No, that is why Lambretta and that Vijay so, uh, scooters, they started selling a lot yeah, because yeah. unka waiting period was very low. But Lambretta those Lambretta was excellent. Vijay Lambretta Super to thaka hua tha. Thaka hua tha. I had a Vijay Super and then I sold it off. And I bought a... By then, of course, khul gaya tha market. So I bought a Bajaj. Bajaj Chetak. Yeah, I had a Bajaj Chetak. Mm. And uh, brother had a Lambretta. Yeah. And subhe, ek din gaye the, agle din delivery mil gai yeah. Because... Uh, People, lot of people didn't know about it and it had just started the Lambert Asp. The, the consumerism in India it was just, you know, I remember when the Coke was brought in, sir, 94. When the first time Coke Cola came back after George Fernandez banned it and stuff like that. 94, me and dad drove 23 kilometers to have a bottle of Coke and come back. <laughs> I'm not no, yes, actually, One the. Of 200 ml, the us time pe 250 ml kya thi? 250 ml yeah. Coca Cola, and come back. The toughest time that India faced was between 65 to about 73, 74. Yeah, that was the toughest time because 65 tak kafi aid aata tha, and that was when they stopped the aid. War ke baad. And yeah, when we went to war. And uh, the Green Revolution came up. Yeah. But, uh, so green Revolution came and then it took a while and then White Revolution also came. It was 73-74 ke baad thoda abu mein aaya tha. But it took a while because even then in a, uh, the... It was unsettled, sir. Yeah, yeah. Because like uh, when I got commissioned I, abhi, when we were shifting here, I think I must have kept my first pay slip still. Wo se likha hua. My total pay used to be 1008 as a second lieutenant. Wow. Eight. I am not a drinker. I've never drunk. I don't drink. I don't smoke. 
बट माई मेस बिल दो डेज फ्री राशन नहीं था सो ओनली इन फील्ड एरिया यूज टू गेट फील्ड फ्री राशन माई मेस बिल यूज टू बी अबाउट एट और हंड्रेड बक्स एट फिफ्टी बक्स खाने के लिए तुमको देना पड़ता था बिकॉज उसमें से ही बिकॉज योर एस डी एंड अदर थिंग्स जो बनते थे तो उसके बनना शुरू हो जाता था जो अदर ड्रेसेस चाहिए होते थे एंड इंस्टॉलमेंट्स में कटता रहता था वी यूज टू हैव अ टेलर इन द यूनिट वो अपना लेके यू आर टेकन देर वो मेजरमेंट लेता था सब हो जाता था एंड पैसे कटने शुरू हो जाते थे <laughs> आपके हाथ में मुश्किल से सौ रुपए बचते थे महीने के लिए फ्रॉम दी मेस यू कुड बोरो हंड्रेड बक्स Yeah. तो वो दो सौ रुपए आपके पास हो जाते थे एंड सो वो आपका सौ रुपए वो आठ सौ पचास में वो सौ रुपए भी ऐड हो जाते थे दैट वाज लाइफ यार एब्सोल्युटली दैट वाज बट सर यू नो कमिंग बैक दिस आई मस्ट से दिस इज बीन एन आई ओपन एंड गाइस यू नो टू द पीपल ऑडियंस दैट आर देयर राइट नाउ एंड ट्रस्ट मी अ लॉट ऑफ द पीपल दैट आर बी वाचिंग दिस इज बीन एन आई ओपन बिकॉज़ यू नो व्हिच इज ऑफ कोर्स a lot of us will say yaar ye to you know us karta hi hai humko pata tha but the connections that we've been able to bring about the serbia connection and we see that happening today the ukraine issue the syria the iraq of course iran and India. if today today mbs kind of keeps his eyes a little more open what will happen to him is something that we'll have to see uh the threat is always going to be on india you can imagine and i covered this in my talk yesterday the amount of people that came to india just for us to change the way we buy oil uh it's not something that we need to take lightly we need to understand this study this and kind of just see how this game plays out because this is going to be the game for tomorrow uh a lot of us and i keep saying this you know a lot of us make this mistake of judging this war in ukraine as the military battle well military is one part of the situation there's a whole lot which is happening around there and trust me this is nothing short of a world war which is happening you are looking only at military and the narratives there are multiple domains other domains also at work it's nothing short of a world war they i mean it's just people are not fighting and breaking each other's faces but countries are out today to get each other and ensure that for their own survival the other country sinks i mean if we would have gone the western way today gentlemen trust you me our expenses in a month would have gone up by 40% to a minimum uh that's just fuel you know <laughs> you can imagine what would have happened for the mom uh sir thank you so much i mean as always in lightning session uh thank you know i i you, you gave me a topic which is close to my heart like i said i've been following since the when things started happening i was in staff college at that time and i started following it what is going on so so i mean the 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 connections that you've done guys uh, you know this is for me it's been a very very good session i've learned quite a bit and i wish we can cover the sometimes as uh, one of the viewers i think navin mentioned that we need to do something on the minerals as well and see how that thing goes on because you know all these things are a little more technical but they actually affect the geopolitics of the day yeah so right. as you know thank you so much once again and till next time probably i think our next session will be in the next year so happy new yes, year yes, sir yes, yes. Uh, and, thank you uh, thank you and all the best i am i won't be available between 8th and 12th of january no problem sir so there is a major event of annual event of the peninsula foundation i am associated Achha. with them that's happening so all of us will plan around it it's with the taiwanese so let's see what they have to say <laughs> it's on the indo pacific so very oh, interesting blue fantastic. economy indo pacific and all and we are having people coming from uh, sri lanka from maldives from taiwan from bangladesh so it will be very interesting to see because we, you know i think post that we could we could just yeah we pitched it uh, we looked at it and i think we decided that though we call it the indo pacific but we would prefer to keep it in the indian ocean region for us <laughs> and taiwanese are coming from there they were interested so they are coming so awesome. they will give us their they will give us their pacific western pacific perspective perspective interesting yeah yeah and, I, I, I'm and sure though gonna... we are also calling all the indo pacific especially the major quad and other embassies consulates who are here in chennai 
So they all express their interest to attend. <laughs> so let's see. What I, comes out. And I, I would appreciate if you enlighten us on whatever you can. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, sure. On this one, 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 one minute, one minute. <laughs> I think sir remembered some book that we need to see. Guys, before I sign off, please, 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 my request to you like this video, subscribe to show you Machiavelli's. This is that book I'm talking of. Ah. The discourses. We know about his prints, but I would recommend you read this. It is very interesting. It's now you can see it's fading. I bought it in 1990, and uh, it is a it is an eye opener what he writes about how democracies function and what all problems democracies go through. Or in his terms, like I had said last time, he had written it based on the Roman Empire. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. a cycle. Like we all talk of Paul Kennedy of the rise and fall of nations, 400 year cycle. He is not given a timeline here, but he talks of a cycle that you get to a dictator, the autocrat, the oligarchy, like they have a diarchy, triarchy. You come to a republic, what all problems a republic faces and goes up. And quite a lot of it, if you read it, you'll be able to relate to it. It's a penguin <laughs> classic, by the way. It's I, a penguin penguin classic. You can buy it. I need to read. Yes. Thank you so much, sir. As guys, as I was saying, uh, please like, subscribe, and if you can do help out the DevTalks efforts, check out my website at thedevtalks.com and stay tuned. Uh, wish all, especially sir, who we are going to see in the next year, a very happy new year. And of course, Jahin, sir. Jahin, happy new year to all of you. Thank you. Thank you, sir.